Thank you very much. You may be seated and uh, welcome. I welcome myself here. Um, so, and those of you online, I don't see everybody for sure, but I know Mary is here, Mike. I think I saw Christian and Kenwood and Pat. I... <laughs> Amen. Uh, tonight is going to be simple. We're going to talk about the furtherance of the gospel. But I uh, do want to go back to a question we've, I know I asked you before, and it's going to clarify everything. Before we do, I'd like to have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great privilege we have to, to serve you, Lord Jesus. And we want to serve you uh, according to your will, Lord Jesus. Not our ways, but the, one, the way you'd like us to and to accomplish the mission, Lord Jesus. Uh, bless this night for us. Bless the study. Bless your servant through whom you will speak. May he speak only what you would have him to speak and clean him that every, every uh, uh, may his, the path that he be the, this channel you're going to use, Lord Jesus, and that your word may go through and that uh, it will uh, not come back to you void. We ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. A question I used to ask a long time ago, uh, it appeared to be simple, but you will be amazed how not too many people, people have to think to answer it. Do we live to eat or do we eat to live? We eat to live. Is that correct? Depending on Seriously, some people have to say, do I eat to live or do I live to it? Okay, if you don't eat, will you live? Right? You need to eat to live, but you, not, you don't live to eat. But sometimes we live our lives, it's like everything we, we do is, is really for food. When you have a job, do you live to work or do you work to live? Huh? <laughs> the thing is there are many things we do in life. We do them so we can accomplish our mission in life, right? Of course, you need to eat. You need to be healthy to live. But why do you live for? That's the thing. And until you point your finger on what's the purpose of your life, you may, have a, you may keep on eating, keep on working, keep on doing whatever you're doing, but yet you have no purpose. You don't even know why you do what you do. Okay? Obviously, for you and I, if we didn't have a purpose before, now we all know we have a purpose. What is our purpose, our Christians? Why do we live? To share the gospel. We live to see other people saved. That's, that's it. But do we really think about it every day? You see what I mean? So this is why we have to constantly remind ourselves, why do we do what we do? Why do we do what we do? Why do we eat? Why do we not come to church? Why do we keep ourselves pure? Why everything we do? But if you don't keep it in your mind constantly, you will find yourself just eating, working, come to church, do whatever, but miss the mission. Amen. Okay? Uh, in Acts chapter 1, verses, verses 6 to 8, uh, here, probably, I think it was one of the last time Jesus spoke and his disciples, they had some time together before Jesus went up to heaven. Verse 6 says, when they therefore were come together, they asked Jesus, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, 
It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, it is for us now, right? It is for us. It's like take this as if he was talking to us. Actually, this is us. Ye shall receive power. Well. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you will be witnesses unto me. Jerusalem today for you and I is wherever we are. They were in Jerusalem then. Then wherever you find yourself, you're going to be witness, start from there. But it says, and in all Judea. So it depends if you are whichever city or state you're closer by. Samaria, obviously, you know, you get a little deeper into uh, what they would call those the gen Gentiles, but they were Jewish, but with mixed blood. Then he said to, oh, oh, to the uttermost part of the earth, no limit. You and I have a place where we start but we don't have a limit. We don't have a place to say, okay, it's finished there. It's a huge task, but it's doable. The first generation of Christians, the Bible says they turn the world upside down. Because they took this seriously tonight our main text will come from philippians chapter one we're going to read what paul wrote to the philippians while he was in prison and this is where we get our title for the study uh, the uh, furtherance of the gospel so paul spoke he says in verse 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you and peace from, our, from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Be in confidence of this very thing that he which hath begun this uh, a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to thank this of you all because I have you in my heart in as much as both in my bond and in the defense of and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Just a reminder, he is in prison. Okay, and you know the whole story before 
he made it there. So we get to verse 12 now. After he, he told them everything, encouraged them, and he prayed for them, he says in verse 12, but I would ye, I, but I would ye should understand. I want you to understand this, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out whether unto the furtherance of the gospel. I want you to understand this. I do know I am in prison and I don't know what's going to happen to me, but I do want you to understand everything that happened to me. If you go to the book of Acts and see everything that happened to him until he's in, in prison, he says that all those things happen unto him have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bond are much more bold to speak the word without fear. If we stop here for a moment, let me say that uh, if someone is not a believer, someone is not a Christian, uh, most likely this person is a self-centered person they're pretty much living for themselves of course living for themselves mean they're living for great cause they're living for their family they're living for their country they're living for everything else which which is great okay but it's all centered about them about what's good for them but when and so that's been they fashion themselves into an idol a God unto themselves because really everything evolved around them okay to serve themselves and their family and whatever is good for them and that's fine no problem with that but do you know as Christians it cannot be like this we're supposed to be God-centered people it's of course it's okay to remember you need to eat to live right of course you need money you need work you need good food but really it's not for you it's because you have a mission to accomplish so it's not the same somebody is gathering stuff for themselves but we gathering so we can do perform our mission okay because in Galatians chapter 2, 20, it is Paul said he, he is crucified with Christ. He is crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he lives, yet not he, but Christ liveth in him. Amen. And it's the same thing for you and I, and we can put the I in front of it, say, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But when we say we have to remember we were bought with a price, we have to remember we truly remember the day where we give our lives to Christ. We realize we were a sinner, that we realize we were bound to hell. And then we receive God's grace. I think it's best to, for those, for example, let's just imagine you were in death wall in, in, in jail, and then you get pardoned. It's hard to imagine it, but it, it was just like that. And you would appreciate it more if you were real, but sometimes 
even there we forget if you don't just keep on yes, reminding sir. yourself this is why it's always important to remember where you're from spiritually the first the when we first got saved Amen. so you can renew the joy of your salvation because sometimes we leave we forget and you have to go back when you go back you remember the day where when you were seeking god found you then you will mean this to say yet not i but christ liveth in me and the life which i live now in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me this way you will be able to truly give yourself and whatever you do, whether in words or deed, you will do all for God's glory. And you are not limited as far as what you can do and anybody else is doing, except you have different goals, different purpose, different reason, Amen. okay? So as Christians, though we struggle with sins, but we desire ultimately to see God glorified, okay? More than personal comfort, we seek to glorify God. Amen. That's, so this is our life. So what, whatever you are at work, you're trying to glorify God. Or you, you are at school, whatever you do, your, your neighborhood, you try to live for Christ because you don't live for you anymore, okay? more than personal ambition it's a glory of god and also one of the things that goes together with that god-centered uh, perspective is a concern for other people you always thinking about other people because remember we you will serve at as witness you are living so people can come to christ through you so this is why you you speak purposely with love you act purposely everything you do you do it because somebody is watching and somebody need to see and this is why people talk about how a wife can gain their husband without words. And that's the same way as Christians, we can win people without words by our conversation, our behavior. Okay. Uh, Paul says he rejoiced even though he was in jail because his joy was tight with the purpose of God. So that's why he was able to, to rejoice. Uh, he wasn't rejoicing because he, he, he found a good deal. Maybe they treated him well and he had favor. Uh, no. He says he rejoiced because while he's in prison, it, it seems like being in prison works great for the gospel. And he was happy. And further on, we're going to see, it says whether by his life or by his death, it doesn't matter. So verse 12, we spend, we're going to spend some time here where we see it says uh, in verse 12, really uh, the gospel is progressing in the midst of opposition. In verse 12, God designed the most unlikely circumstances in order to bring the most effective end. You find strange, strange things. I mean, you cannot imagine God's way. Remember it says God's ways are not our ways. You don't understand how he works things, but he has a plan. 
But I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out whether unto the furtherance of the gospel. So pretty much he says, when you add all that happened to me, the result is the progress of the gospel and I'm just happy. Just understand that. And I'm not asking you to have fundraising and to do whatever it takes to get me out of here. I don't really want to get out of here. That's not what I'm asking for. I just want you to understand my circumstances in helping the gospel to move forward. One of the strange things you and I, we know is Joseph, how the circumstances he was in, God used that to save the people. I mean, can you imagine like your brother sold you, actually wanted to kill you first out of jail, jealousy. And it just, God save your life by having them to sell you instead of kill you. And God was in all of that. And then finally he get but and something terrible happened again. And the guy was pretty much innocent, he, he, you know. But then he get thrown in prison. Then in prison, he served faithfully, just wondering, God, what, <laughs> what's going on? He met a couple of friends there. He, you know the story. Even though he didn't know where this was going to go, but he said, hey, uh, if you get a chance, talk about me. But they forgot about him. And finally, you know, what happened? It was God's at work. And through jo jo Joseph, God saved the whole family and yes, the people. Sir. He had a plan. Christ's story is a good story too. Jesus came and died. That's strange. The, from birth, the way he was born and, and all the whole thing. Now let me ask you this, don't you, can you check into your own, own life some strange things that happened to you? To, maybe you tried to go different routes and you tried to do different things and just when you live your life, constantly watch what's going on to you. Maybe something you think is strange, maybe God is working something out. Because remember, you're not yours. Your life is not your life anymore. You're living for him. So he can use you to send you to the cross. He can use you to send you to Potiphar's house. He can use you to be sold, do whatever. You are really his property. Yeah. So if you don't understand that, and to say like Paul, hey, I want you to understand, tell everybody, your family, your brethren, don't be sad for me because God is working something out. Not everything, some things, they are just natural. Things happen in life. But there are things that may be happening in, in your life. It may be something to further the gospel. Maybe God wants you to use your present situation for the furtherance of the gospel. But in order to see that, to live that, you have to understand what your mission is, what even your life is all about. If you don't understand it this way, you're going to fight every single thing that happened to you and you just hindering the gospel. As a matter of fact, God can use anything that happened to you, anything in life, whatever position you are in life, God can use it and he's using it anyway. So whatever happened to you, wherever you are, you have to say, hey, Lord, I don't understand it. 
but may it be used for the furtherance of the gospel. Verse 13. It's advanced the gospel progress among unbelievers. Verse 13 says, Paul says, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. You remember how Paul get to Rome, right? Actually, he didn't have to go to Rome, but when he appealed to Caesar, uh, you know, I said, well, if he didn't appeal, we could, he said, no, I want to go. Because actually it was prophesied in Acts chapter 9, verse 15, 16, after Paul uh, was get saved, the Lord said unto him go thy way that's talking to ananias for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the gentiles and kings and the children of israel for i will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake i mean Don't you think God can say that for you and for me too? So the progress was happening inside and out and can happen inside and out the church. When Paul was in prison, he had a guard attached to him. That's the way they did it to make sure the prisoner is safe and he's not going anywhere. So if you are, you are handcuffed with the guard, wherever you go, the guard goes, right? And they change watch every six hours. So you see, depending how long he was in prison, how many people, the guard he had around him to, to to witness to? If, you, if we don't understand it was a good thing, it's, it, Paul would receive the brethren, he would write the letters, he would dictate the, the, the letter, the God had no choice but to listen to hear, and then he, he would, you can talk to them, they have nowhere to go because Paul wasn't uh, they were, Paul was a captive, but they were also captive, a captive audience. And after six hours, the next one would come. And Paul, you know, he would not keep his mouth shut, just be shy, he would speak. Now think about it. When those guys go home, after so many hours spending with Paul, don't do you think they're going to go out and tell about this strange prisoner? They're going to tell everybody about it. So Paul, the believers in Rome also, he said, while he was in prison, no, that was the third, third, 13. So, so they would go ahead and share about this unique prisoner. They had to listen to, they had to pray with him. They had to listen to his te teaching, his sharing and so forth. I mean, they had to. And in verse 14, not only the unbelievers, but also to the believers, the Christians there. Because verse 14 says, and many of the brethren in the Lord, because of Paul's bond, they were confident as much more bold to speak the word without fear. They get strengthened. 
maybe they they were not as strong as Paul, but when they saw how Paul stood fast, they get strengthened. They watch him standing in trial. They watch him talk. So, few people, at least two of them we know, get very bold after Christ's death. Some who were a, a secret agent, they were Christians, but they would not reveal it. But after death, they became bold. Okay, uh, one of them is Nicodemus and Joseph Arimathea, where the Bible says in John 19, I don't think we have the scripture, uh, verse 38, and after this, Joseph Arimathea, being a disciple of Christ, but secretly for fear of the Jews. There were many who were disciples, but in secret. But after his death, they became bold. That's what happened to those Christians in Rome. They were all in fear, but because of Paul, they became bold. And it's all for the furtherance of the gospel. He besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Christ. Nicodemus was the same one too. Remember in John 7 where he advocated for Christ. He said, okay, is, is, does our law permit that we condemn someone without? But when they look at him, they say, are you one of his disciples too? And then he said, oh, no, I'm not saying this. But now after Jesus died, he became bold. Then he came, uh, he brought mixtures also of mirror in order to, to bury Christ, okay? So Paul's chain loose their tongue. You remember the, uh, what Joseph told his brethren? He says, you made it for evil. But good man, there are things it's either people do to you or life brings to to you. Even if the intent was evil, God can tune it to good. And let it be a good that turn into the furtherance of the gospel. We think circumstances must be ideal in order to be effective. We need we're going to wait for this, for that, and when that hap happened, and uh, we're going to do this as if we're waiting for something. But God doesn't work like that. God works with whatever you have now, wherever we are now. I, I don't know how many times I say it, looking at our ministry, our church, we don't need anything else. We have everything we need. The only thing left is do the job. That's it. And now the last scripture I want to read for us, then I hope we take it to ourselves. It's First Corinthians chapter 9, 19 to 23. For though I be free from all men, Paul says, yet have I made myself servant unto all. And the reason I do that, that I might gain the more. You don't gain people just by accident. You don't just stay like this and people just get saved through you. If you see we have new people in church and people getting baptized, somebody did something. And once you do something, God will guide you. God will be the one to really, remember some plant, some water, God makes the increase. Somebody plant, somebody water. So if we don't have the mindset to 
be that light to be the testimony and if all we want to do just eat and drink and be merry with no reason no purpose we're not going to see the fruit but if we purposely do what we do you give a glass of of water to someone you you have in mind why you say good morning to someone behind your head it's the gospel everything you do it's almost certain god will work something out but that's not what we really do every day every day we meet people every day we talk to people it just life goes as normal and when we have issues problem or whatever people come to us we go to them we just discuss them but it's like nothing and unto the jews i became as jew i became as jew i don't have to be jew i became as jew that i might gain the jews to them that are under the law as under the law that i might gain them that are under the law i'm not under the law but why argue with them? Because you have something in mind. You want their soul. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without love to God, but under the love to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak, became i as weak you're not weak but why do you have to show you strong then somebody's weak why don't you that i might gain the weak i am made all things to all men this is a fisher of men right here it's somebody who really is seeking to see people safe. That I might, by all means, save some. By all means. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker thereof with you. When we are saved, you and I, is this gospel sharing for some of us or is it for all of us? Is it some will be witness, witnesses and some can just come to church? It's all of us. This is why I must say I'm a little disappointed. I don't see the ministry we had uh, that I'm convinced will teach every single member of the church teach them how to share the gospel tune everyday conversation into gospel conversation simple simple but the mindset of sharing the gospel is not quite back i say back because when i get saved in this ministry it's the burden for soul was real. It was real. It's like every single soul you meet, you praying, you talking, you praying to see, okay, you finding a way to see how can you tell them about Jesus. It's no longer there. It's no longer there. Well, and we need to get this back because amen. this is our mission. Amen. This is why Jesus saved us for to go and be witness unto him. I want to finish with, uh, first, with Philippians, verse 15, chapter 1. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, 
not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. All he worries about Christ is preached. Christ is preached. I mean, he says, well, I would prefer the, and then he says, even at my ex expense, even though they do it to hurt me, that's okay, but Christ is preached. All he cares about, like the Christ's name is out there, and he's happy. And I think we, we should not be, we cannot be comfortable if we don't have this burden of the mission that we have, because that's why we are saved for. We are saved to go and seek. We are given the ministry of, that's our ministry. Every so other ministry you see we're doing, it's all come after our main ministry. It's to accomplish the ministry of reconciliation. So you, if you play music, if you cut the yard, if you do the sound, if you do the preaching, whatever you do, remember, it's all so we can see people saved. That's all it is. So I pray tonight you don't see a Bible study, but you see a reminder of what our mission is. That this idea of just gaining knowledge and gaining understanding and be whatever you be and not seeing people save. It's like having a great business and no money is coming in. It's like you are on the field playing football or soccer and you play well, but you don't score. What does that mean? Uh, the, the, your fans are watching you, they want you to score. Oh yeah, you can have, I mean, everything just perfect, but if you're not scoring, and we score when we see people saved, that's what it is. Oh, we spread the word, go ahead, spread it. Go ahead, plant water. Obviously, God will be the one to make it grow, but are we planting? Are we watering? Amen. That's uh all I have for you, and uh, I will see you Sunday. And if there are questions, I'm ready for that. No, if you would stay for a moment. <laughs> so do Q and A.